Ladies and gentlemen, today's installment of HTD Entertainment's interview series is brought to you by Respect for Life Apparel. Have you been looking for a clothing and apparel brand that truly represents the culture and the people in it? Well, look no further because Respect for Life is the brand for you. Developed in Central Virginia by Central Virginians, Respect for Life is a clothing brand that reflects a deep cultural connection to the community. We offer a variety of high quality t-shirts, hoodies, sweatsuits, and even designer face masks. Each item of clothing that we offer at Respect for Life comes with a message of upliftment, empowerment, positivity, and most of all, respect. Here at Respect for Life Apparel, we are committed to not only building a great company through our creative styles and designs, but delivering excellent service while actively contributing to and building up our community. To learn more or to order, visit us at respectforlifeapparel.com or on Instagram at Respect for Life Apparel. Okay, once again, DJ Marvelous at the Deck Entertainment. And uh, again, we're shifting gears, and I got somebody that uh, uh, every, every one of these people that I've been uh, interviewing lately is somebody I've been looking, trying to run down for years. So I finally run this young brother down. He's got a, a heck of a story and a heck, heck of a skill set that I think y'all need to hear about. Again, this is HTD Media, worldwide uh, coverage of the culture. And welcome to this program, my man, Jalil Brown. How you doing? Thank you for having me. It's truly an honor. No doubt, no doubt. Thank you, sir. Um, first of all, tell the folks where you're from, man, and what your current occupation is. So I'm from Culpeper, Virginia. I currently reside in Fredericksburg, Virginia. On my nine to five, I serve as a data analyst on a FEMA contract, but I also work at my church as a communications director and a musician. Okay. Uh, I have a little side business, JKB Strategic Consulting, where I help churches, small business with graphics, productions, event planning, anything of that nature. Okay. You sort of, you're the, you're the, you're the, undoubtedly you're the program manager. <laughs> All right, that'll work. <laughs> you're the program manager because the program manager is the guy that has his hands in everything. And everybody, you know, and, and the reason I, I want to talk to you because um, my show a lot of times is about how to, how do we do these things you know everybody again we just talked off camera there's a lot of people that can sing rap dance all that stuff but who's that guy that kind of can kind of put all of that together because you know if you're a small business you don't have a big staff of people to do stuff for you so right. you're it you know so i'm sure you you you're, you're a staff of one yes sir yes, okay sir. good <laughs> yes good. sir yeah um so what is your uh, musician origin where did where did you because and this is what i this is what i foresaw this is what I started thinking about. There's a lot of artists that be that start in the church and they go play secular music, and they they never come back. Um, it seems, from what I think, and I don't know this, but you might have, you have to correct me. You probably started in the church, like most young young black men. Yep. And you you've done some secular music. Yep. And you are back home at the church. Yes, sir. You know yes, what I'm sir. saying. So can you talk to me a little bit about? That, that whole, uh, your, your origin, learning how to play music and so forth. Man, definitely, man. I, I have to give props to, to my dad, Thomas Brown. He he was a drummer back in high school. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, my family was always, you're going to be like your dad. You're going to be like your dad. And so, But I never got to watch him play, you know, but I just heard so much about him. One of the cool things was, I guess for me, I started playing in churches in second grade. Mm -hmm. I think one of the first churches I played for was Canaan Baptist Church in Reva. <laughs> I played for Beulah Baptist Church in Egmansville. I played for so Antioch how, Madison. How, how old were you when you first started playing? I, I started playing at three. Okay. My first church probably was like at seven, seven to eight. Ah. Uh, so um, free union, as I got a little older, um, went to Freddy'sburg and started playing for a few churches towards high school. So I, I kind of stuck that. Drums was always my passion, but mm -hmm. I didn't always have an opportunity to express that outlet. Mm -hmm. So like high school band, you got kicked out the band. But how you take something that you're so passionate about from you? So for me, it was like, I'm just going to keep on playing in church, playing in church till something happened. Mm -hmm. Just so happened, uh, when I went to Virginia State, had to have another like reality check, trying to play drums with a choir. They was like, nah, we got a drummer. So you're like, you know, most of us ain't going to be humble enough to be like, I, I'll just be the drum tech. Mm -hmm. But for me, that was an honor just to be around people who were already where I was trying to get. It's like it's like uh, when I had Doby and uh, Alex here, we talked about sports. It's funny, like when you when you in the, in the school and you in Culpepper 
and you're playing in the school, and you know you're around a bunch of people that are that you probably may be superior in skill set to, mm -hmm. and then you get to college where everybody <laughs> is just as good as or or better than you are. Absolutely. So I'm sure I saw, assume you ran into a lot of excellent musicians. Absolutely, man. Not not just excellent musicians, but musicians that didn't mind having an understudy around. And that's right. something I didn't have. That that, that doesn't happen often anyway. It, it, exactly. <laughs> so for me, it was like, man, I'm just, I set up the drums. I set up the keyboard and the bass too. Like, But I just wanted to be <laughs> around music. Yeah. And I think that kind of helped me, as, as you asked earlier about, you know, what was that secular side? Like, it humbled me in college to go to the secular side once I graduated, graduated on a Saturday. Monday, I got an audition to play for Genuine. Hold on a second all right. before we get there, because right, right. because that story has okay. always been fascinating to me. But I okay. wanna I wanna okay. find out about how you learned how to. Uh, were you professionally trained, or did you learn by ear, or both? <laughs> <laughs> Never took professional lessons. I always participated in school band, middle school, high school. Um, probably I probably say my mom and dad's car was my practice area because every time we went to a restaurant, I just used the straws to beat on the seat. You you sound just like my brother, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I never took lessons, but I just had a passion and a knack for it. When I didn't get a chance to play, I was always at somebody's church trying to go to the drums to see how this worked. Mm -hmm. uh, so, But I never really had lessons um, other than just, you know, self-taught, self-motivated. So you, you so you never, you never learned how to read music at all? I learned in uh, middle school, kind of got by in high school, but I, I was like, nah, this really ain't my thing. I made it. I made enough. I knew enough to read to get accepted onto the band in college, but after about three, four days of reading sheet music, I was like, "This ain't for me." This, okay, this ain't for me. All right. So okay. So before we get to Virginia State, how did why did you get kicked out of the band? Can you talk about that at all? <laughs> stealing, stealing drum, stealing cymbals or something? What's up? Nah, man. I was. <laughs> I was really I still I stole a soda actually. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm, I'm serious. I did not know that it was about theft. But okay, go man, ahead. Yeah, um, it was just some little sodas laying around in the band room, man. Like, <laughs> I, it was thirsty, you know. You'd be rehearsing and stuff, and so I was like, man, let me just get one of these drinks. And luckily, I had one principal that was like, she was like, yo, I see so much potential in you. We're gonna kick you out the band, but just you know, hold tight, you know, make it up, do whatever, whatever. So I was in that position to kind of redeem myself. Mm -hmm. um, got kicked out, which to me was like a major setback because that's all I wanted to do was play drums. Yeah, Sports really wasn't my thing. Really wasn't into no other clubs or no organizations for under, you know, for, for high school. So senior year, I was like, I got one idea. Believe it or not, I went to Norfolk State Band Camp. Oh, okay. Going into my senior year. There's, there's hope for you after all, oh, young man. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so I went to Norfolk State Band Camp, and i never forget. The band director who was on a charter bus going to do a practice run, and he said, Jalil, if you can <clears throat> if you can learn all 32 rudiments before next August, you got a spot on our band. I was like, okay. For the people that don't understand, talk, Tim, talk about what the okay. rudiments are. Rudiments, you got um, like flams, paradiddles, single stroke rolls, all kinds of drum technology or drum terminology. Uh, it's just mu musical terms, musical okay. terms. So. And, and there are certain ones you need to know in order to read music so that it makes sense. Tracking, okay. I had no idea uh, after maybe like the sixth one, I was lost. You know, yeah. so I could get by in high school, but not in college. So um, Going I came to, back to the principal. Yeah. I said, hey, I, and this was around the time Drumline came out. Yeah. You know, that's so what I was, was like, going to Cannon kind of gave me a little bit of inspiration. I was yeah. like, I was like, look, I, I know I, I don't read music that well. I know I did some mischievous things my freshman, sophomore, junior year in high school, but can you give me one chance? I was like, I went to Norfolk State. They gave me this sheet music that I could read. I, mm -hmm. I knew how to understand this because it was on a high school level for band camp students. Okay. Brought the music back. She said, okay, let's go talk to the band director. Went and talked to him. He said, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. So I, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> I was the first person to start a drum line for the basketball game. Oh, this okay. wasn't for football. This was strictly basketball. This Culpeper High School? Culpeper High School. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, and we would be playing over in the uh, middle school gym and over in the high school gym, you know, for the bigger games was over at the middle school gym. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they let me start a, the drum line. So it was probably like six to eight of us, mm -hmm. you know. So that kind of gave me that inspiration to be like, yeah, this is the right track. It was senior year already. They had me on about five or six different committees, like step. I was on, like, doing – the manager for like step team. I was on the football team. I led it in track, led it in football. I was on the 
president's advisory, like the principal's advisory club. So I was doing a lot. Mm -hmm. So it was like, let's just give him a chance. Right. So having that kind of opportunity kind of propelled me to want to go to a HBCU. Okay. So when you, so you, uh, and you said you had, you, you were down to pick in between Norfolk State and Virginia State? Norfolk State and Virginia State. Uh, if, if we be honest, I haven't graduated a long time ago. <laughs> so I had messed up a lot my freshman, sophomore, and junior year in high school. So I think when I graduated in Culpeper, man, I think I had like a 1.9. Yeah. I know, I knew Virginia State needed a 2.3. Yep. And so for me, it was like, man, I don't even think I can get in school. You know, but my pops, he was like, yo, you know, don't settle. Try it anyway. Go for it. I think you can do it. So man, I went full head of steam. I started applying for scholarships. I knew I didn't qualify for it. Mm -hmm. Whale and Blue Ridge Baptist Association, they had mm -hmm. a scholarship. The NAACP had a scholarship. Those, those and, couple dollars and, here and there really add up. And, and the thing was, like, I still had a low GPA. Yeah. But I was, remember I told you I was active in church. Mm -hmm. So, like, that Whale and Blue Ridge, like, even though my academics was a little off, like, I was still always active and participated. So that part ended up paying off. Those same people run the NAACP. Yeah. You know, so... Out of all the students that applied, I got the scholarships. Man, I'm so proud of you because I, cause, cause what we talk about with my team, man, you know, one of our tenets of our company is academic scholarship. Yes, and what we try to explain is that you do not have to be a genius to be a college student. Yep. You know, I got a doctoral degree, and I don't believe that I am a genius, but I do, like I said on the radio the other day, I was on a, a – Charles, uh, station with uh, Charles Lewis in, in Charlottesville. Okay. And I told him, I said, look, I'm not a genius, but I can persevere. Yes, sir. You know, there's a whole lot of other uh, skills that you need to be a college student yes. other than just being being a smart kid. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. so anyway, sorry, man. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> So uh, where where was we at? <laughs> <laughs> this happens every time, man. Because we we just start getting down here, and we start going down the rabbit hole. So you your GPA was a little out of whack. You got yeah. you finally got some money up from from some churches and so forth. Yeah, yeah. So I I applied to Virginia State. Um, my stepmom, some of her family had ties at Virginia State, and we just rode down there one day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I just like to follow up to see if I got in. They kind of pulled my files. I think part of it was like I actually went down there to see if I got in. I was, you know, yeah. I didn't wait for the letter in the mail. I yeah. was like, hey, I just, I just really wanted to check on the status of my application. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Mr. Brown, you've been approved. And like a week later, I had the letter. But like, mind y'all, I, I had a one night. I already should have been disqualified. <laughs> and so when I talk to people about get, being in the right place at the right time, having the right people around that's you, right. that's being a, that's with the right crowd, like that stuff just paid off. Yeah, you know, even even though. Call Pepper didn't talk about HBCUs because I would have been known in freshman year HBCUs existed. Mm -hmm. They never talked about it. We hear about the UVAs, the Virginia Techs, the Raffords, the Shannon Doors, the BCU, but they never talked about um, Virginia Union, Virginia mm -hmm. State, Hampton, mm -hmm. uh, Norfolk State. Like those were non-existent conversations. So Howard University, Morgan I, State, these are absolutely. great schools, man. See, I ain't say those schools because they were would have paid out of state tuition. Yeah, yeah. You know, but so just for just the in-state part, I'm like, hey, that's these are opportunities. I ain't even never know these schools existed. That's right. You know, so Howard. So you I knew, never. Yeah. So so let me let me get this right. So you never went on any college visits at all? No. Okay. The only time I went, me because my dad knew I liked the band. We would go. Me and him would go to Howard games sometimes. Okay. But that probably, other than it was the probably school, a, a, a look, probably a exciting time. Great time. <laughs> great. Any Saturday we could go, I'd be like, "Yo, you, you is it a football game going on?" Yeah, you know. Yeah. But as far as the school, they never promoted. No, this was two thousand three to two thousand seven. Yeah. So they never promoted um, HBCU tours or checking out any other schools. Mm -hmm. I don't remember even seeing recruiters come for those other schools because I got offers to play college football mm -hmm. from like D3 schools. Right. But my passion was music. Mm -hmm. I ain't getting no offers to go, but I knew that's where I wanted, the yeah. kind of steps I wanted to follow on. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how that happened. So, okay. All right. So when you, so tell me a little bit about, so uh, let me ask you this before we get to, to your, your fraternity. Okay. Did, when you were at, at Virginia State, did you happen to visit any other campuses in, while you were in college? You know, did you go visit other schools? Absolutely. Because I, because I really, what I'm trying to say, trying to ask is, um, did what was the experience of being on a uh, at uh, an historic university like Virginia State, a historic HBCU, um, versus going to uh, like a, a PWI, a privately white, a predominantly white institution? Did you go to any of those? So for me, 
being at an HBCU, I we didn't visit a lot of PWIs, but like the few we did was maybe like VCU, okay, or University of Richmond, mm-hmm. few and far between. But I enjoyed going to other HBCUs. Yeah. I didn't realize, like, all I knew was Culpepper. Mm-hmm. I don't know nothing else. I don't know how anything else operates. I ain't <laughs> never been around this many black people at one time. <laughs> like, it's a whole new world. Yeah. And so when I went, I was excited. Like, I didn't know that the school took the school to the basketball games. Right. That was new to me. I was yeah. like, we, we can go to the game for free? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yo, jump on the bus. We're going to go support. We're going to St. Paul's yeah. before they close. Or yeah. we're going to... Um, Johnson C. Smith, or we going to Winston Salem? I was like, I never been to these places, so I go and we in the gyms and we and I was like, oh, fraternities, sororities, what is that? You mm-hmm. know, but I mean, everything was just like high school times ten. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, yeah. Carl Pepper got good fans, you know, so oh, their yeah. sports yeah. fans are like all in, especially basketball season. So just to go to other HBCUs and kind of see that there's a whole lot of other people just like me, everywhere around the East Coast, mm-hmm. where HBCUs are prominent. So. It was it was just an amazing experience, man. I I don't regret anything yeah. in my undergrad. I made some bad decisions, but I don't regret. That's anything, what growing up is about, man. Nor, nor the student loan debt I got. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but we talk I, about I think, that later. Yeah, so I think it was it was amazing though. It was it was definitely amazing. So what what made you uh what made you um tell me your I, iota story, man? So how did that happen? Man, um, oh, kind of, and kind of, okay. well, kind of like, like lay it out, like okay. what, because, because you know, some people that that are listening to this have no idea, right, right, right. what what being in a fraternity is all about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, our fraternity was founded at Morgan State University, where so Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated. We're part of the Divine Nine. We were formed in 1963, which was right in the middle of the Civil Rights Movement. See how that dude is spitting all that data out. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a process to get there. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. But go ahead. And, and so and so for me, uh, I really when I went to college, I wasn't interested in joining a fraternity. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, I didn't really know what they did. But two, a lot of the people I ran across, like they just didn't have the right attitude. That's right. And, and at, at Virginia State, when I got there, it was only two iotas. So I only saw two guys with this on. So when I saw them, I was like, it's not a lot of them. But I like something about the way he carries himself. Mm-hmm. And I never forget it was a guy named Chris. Another guy named Anthony, and I just thought they had the best mindset. You know, I was like, I'm a businessman, and I always see him with his briefcase, and just very sociable. And so, mm-hmm. in my mind, I was like, Yo, I, I, maybe I should read to see what he does, yes. or what does his organization stand for. So I started looking at what they were founded upon, and how their founders persevered, and they were a little different, and they didn't necessarily fit a stereotype. And I was like, I gotta find some more about these guys. My roommate, he ended up pledging the next year. Mm-hmm. And Toyota, so I was like, I was like, yo, now, now it, out the woodworks, it was like twelve of these guys, and I was yeah. like, okay, cool, I, yeah. I can get with this. So, um, I read up on it, did my studying, talked to a few people that I trusted about it, um, and uh, I was like, yo, this this where I'm supposed to be, mm-hmm. and, and things happened during our process that really validated that I knew I was in the right spot. And, and to me, one of those things was, you know, not losing my faith. Or my belief in God. Like, I knew I was grounded on that. Mm-hmm. And some of the things they did throughout the process, and, and then they showed me was like, yo, these, this is a true brotherhood. Yeah. We could say that a lot. Oh, that's my bro. That's mm-hmm. my brother. But when people show you and can say it to them, it's like a whole different perspective. So for me, IOTA was my choice, man. I don't regret anything. I want to be more active now. I'm trying to change my schedule around. But um, just the divine nine in general, man, the, the real goal is for community service, community right. outreach. Give back to the community. So um, we have programs like IOTA Youth Alliance. We partner with St. Jude to do different things, partner with other organizations. And for me, like, it's been a blessing to mm-hmm. even, you know, from to go from Culpeper to college when I really shouldn't even have been accepted. <laughs> then to join a fraternity and I can give back to the city I'm living in. Mm-hmm. So I lived in Petersburg after I graduated for a while. Oh, I didn't know that. Had my own spot. Yeah, just lived there for, for yeah, a good yeah. amount of time. I mean, we were doing things like fish fries and things we take for granted now. Mm-hmm. You know, we may see a few homeless people where we live, Call Pepper, Freddy's Bird, there's a few. But when you go to see an abundance of it, mm-hmm. and, you know, for us, it was like, let's do the fish fry or let's impart into the youth now so they don't end up like that. Well, what yeah. can we do? Sometimes it's just a conversation. We was just stopping by elementary schools. We was doing like a fish Friday every second Friday of the month. We partnered with some churches. Yeah. We cook and we provide the field, serve them, clean up their trays. I mean, we would do it all for them just to show that we appreciate um, them 
and that they're not forgotten. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people just want to feel like they're not forgotten, that they still are a part. Once I joined the most humbling experiences, some of my frat brothers lost parents mm -hmm. while we were through our process. Just to be able for some, be there with somebody you just met like five months ago, right. and you feel like y'all known each other forever. Yeah, you know. So to me, the whole brotherhood aspect is something that I definitely cherish and don't take lightly. I tell people all the time, man. If if you're looking at what organization that you're in, it's an organization that you're interested in. Uh, you you hit it right on the head, and and it's about the output. What kind of example? Because uh, we all know the stereotypes, right? Yep, 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 and, yep. and there are some stereotypes that are actual kind of really yeah, yeah. real, yep. you know. And um, some people are some. Put, let's be honest, man. Some people are just are focused on stuff other than just the brotherhood. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I'm not trying to besmirch anyone's uh, uh, organization or their uh, why they join a given organization, but it's about looking at the type of people these organizations are putting out. Yep. And um, but you know, but yeah, and nothing, nothing but respect for you, man. Because like I said, you carry you carry it well, and you're a great example. And and honestly, what you're doing with all of your your outreach and your services is really just creating the next generation of, of of of, of iotas, the next generation of, of of men and so forth. And that's a great thing, man. So yeah, I appreciate that, man. Um, yeah. Okay. So so now, Virginia State is this is this where your foray into uh, playing with national uh, uh, recording artists and so forth happened? Yeah, believe it or not, it, that's where it started. So, like, just to take half a step back. Okay. So, during during my undergrad, I was a part of the Virginia State Gospel Chorale. Okay. So, I was serving as the drum tech. I would just go to all the programs, set up all the equipment, unload the buses, load the buses. But to me, it was free experience, not mm -hmm. knowing what was to come. But that's mm -hmm. why I always tell people, man, it, first impressions mean everything. Yes. I came in humble, and the lady, she said, Jalil, you know, we, we got people in place, but it would be nice if you hang around. Mm -hmm. Most people don't want to Plus, you could play. You yeah, could play. I, I you, could. You, will get your you will get your chance. Uh, eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if you know that that's what you want and that's you right. stick to it, Correct. you know it'll come around. So I, 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 sit, I sit on the sideline for like three years. And I was cool with it. Mm -hmm. I, Chico, Charles Chico Wiley was the drummer's name. So I sit patiently, watched him every single week. So um, one time, he couldn't come to the program, to the concert we had. It was like, Jalil, do you want to play? And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to play. <laughs> I don't been watching for three years and I still ain't ready. You know, so a couple of other programs, he didn't make it. It was like, Man, you did a really good job, man. You did a good job. And that's all I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. After years of patiently waiting, for them to say, you did a good job. If you don't come to the next one, you can play that one too. You can play that one too. You know, so we started touring. And that's where I got a respect for music, a greater respect for music and traveling. All I had known was Call Pepper. Mm -hmm. I know a couple of churches may go to afternoon ch programs at somebody else's church, but I didn't understand. In another county. In another county, yeah. But I, and that was big. You yeah, know? yeah. We're going to have dinner at 1.30 and a service at 3. I didn't understand the fact of going to a different city every day, going to a different hotel every other night. I never did that before. Traveling on tour buses, like I didn't, that was, that was like huge to me. Mm -hmm. So we were going from state to state. And so the beauty of the choir was we were doing tours every semester. So one one month we were in University of Tennessee out in Nashville. We toured the college. We did concerts at the college at nighttime. We did high school and middle school promo dates during the day. But we also used that as a recruitment tool to get students exposed to HBCUs and to be able to offer admissions. Mm -hmm. So we was killing two birds with one stone, yeah, yeah, no doubt. city to city. So we was in... Atlanta, I'll never forget Atlanta. We was in Daytona Beach where we could visit Bethune Cookman. Like stuff like that, you don't get to do often. Right. We visited, um, I never, I mean, we went, we was in Connecticut. We Some of these York, places Jersey. I never even heard of them until I joined, until I went to college. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It, it, absolutely. They, they were on the football schedule. It's like, oh, <laughs> where is that? Yeah. You know? Buff, we was in Buffalo, New York. We was in, uh, Toronto, Canada. Yeah. Had never been to Canada. Great places, uh, man. <laughs> man, you got your birth certificate, you got the license, you got this, you got that, you need ID, you need this. And I was like, where are we going again? You know, <laughs> well, we're going to stay at Niagara Falls and we're going to drive over. And I, so for me, it was like, yo, it I, sounds like you had good leadership though. Because, amazing because, because, because sometimes like, and I tell, this is how this connects to these young entertainers, mm -hmm. right? Of all shades, right? Do you think just because you can put 16 bars down on a piece of paper, 
then you can just go to any city and perform those. So no, that's a whole lot yeah. of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that, that is important to, uh, to get you prepared to, 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 to kill it in every city you go to. Absolutely. Not just, not just kill it, but I mean, you got to set your pricing right if it's not a promo date. Yeah. You got to have hotel stays. Does it even make sense? Yeah. Because we were making loops. So we weren't just traveling on the way. We sung on the way back. Mm-hmm. So if we gonna sing in Niagara Falls. That's how you do On the it. way back, we're gonna sing in Pittsburgh. That's how you do it. You know, or we're gonna stop in Ohio. We're gonna stop in Cleveland. And mm-hmm. to me, that was amazing. Mm-hmm. Not knowing I would ever get on the management side. Yeah. That was not even in, in my thought process. But again, being in the right place at the right time and being humble enough to sit under somebody else, mm-hmm. I got that firsthand experience that ultimately just set me up for success after I got off that secular side. Mm-hmm. So I graduated Virginia State on December 17, 2011. The Monday before, the graduation was on a Saturday. That Monday, I got a call. Hey, Jay, what's going on with you? I said, no, nah, I'm chilling. This was the bass player for Genuine. Um, you busy? I said, I'm about to graduate college. I'm <laughs> excited. You know what I'm saying? I'm real hyped. I don't got no job, though. I said, I'm real excited. He was like, um, you think you can maybe come up here and audition for, for the band? I was like... Uh, Jalil, you don't got no job. About to graduate. <laughs> you don't got nothing to do. Student loan payments don't kick in for like another six months. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. All right, man, Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we're going we gonna to be up in Maryland for an audition. Just come to King George. You can ride with me. I was cool. I was like, like, like Baltimore I, or like, like closer to D.C.? Closer to Baltimore, Bowie. Okay. Like okay. Up th- all the way up 301 Bowie. Okay, yeah. So I was like, we can make that happen. It's Tuesday, mind you. Mm-hmm. The, the day was Tuesday. I was like, I'm going to go home Sunday night after church from Petersburg to Freddysburg. I'm going to stay with my dad, see what happens. I'm going to hang out Monday, maybe listen to some music. Now, I've been in church all my life, y'all, so I don't know Genuine. <laughs> I've heard Pony before, <laughs> but I don't know who Genuine is. So anything else that you tell me, I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> so I get a call Monday. Jay, what you doing? I said, I'm at home relaxing. I just got, got my degree. I'm super hyped. Hey, look, for the, for the if you never graduated <laughs> college, look, I feel you. Your head is going all over the place. Yeah, See, it's different yeah. for me because I was a soldier. So I we, got you. we had we got a job the day we graduated. Got you. We got were you. we were straight. But the rest of y'all, I'm like, I don't know how you're gonna pay bills, man. Exactly. <laughs> you homeless. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Basically, you and know so, what I'm saying. And so I, I was like, I'm at home chilling. I need a favor, man. I said, What's going on? Can you meet me today? And I was like, Today? He was like. They want you to come tonight. I said, but you said Tuesday. He said, how soon can you get here? I said, uh, now, mind you, I ain't had no license. <laughs> I, I, you a real college yeah, student. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was struggling. And, or either I didn't have a ride. Something to happen. Either same, way, I didn't have no get there at same the moment. Thing, same so, thing. So I was like, man, let me see if I can catch the Fred bus. Like, that was the little transportation around Freddy'sburg. Uh-huh. So I was like, if I walk to Target... <laughs> I can see when the next Fred come. If the Fred take me to the Greyhound station downtown, I can take the other Fred to King George. These joints only ran like every other hour. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm trying to be there as soon as possible. So as a drummer, you got sticks, you got snares, you got foot pedal, you got cymbals. I was loaded walking mm-hmm. to get to Target for an audition. We get there. He was like, oh, here are the songs. Bro, it's 5 o'clock. The re- this audition is at 7. He was like, we're just going to listen to it all the way to Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> People think I'm joking, but this is real talk. This is so serious. People- this is this is such a serious, this is such a, we're laughing and joking, but this is a life lesson. Because yeah. when you're ready, you're ready. But anyway. Absolutely. So you I, weren't ready at the time. I was but not anyway, ready. Right. I was not ready. But I, I got up there and I I fiddled my way through the first rehearsal, man. We at this guy's house. Wasn't genuine house, but we was at his Music director's house. They called him the MD. We was at the MD's house. And, I mean, huge house, huge neighborhood, nice drum. I mean, nice everything. I was like, whew, okay. <laughs> I, okay, I'm ready. I can handle this. He can get there, get through the first rehearsal. So he was like, you really don't know this music, but uh, you, you can hold your own. Yeah. Do you have, you have click tracks. Click tracks is what you hear in the background. Like, it has percussive instruments. It can have congos, shakers, Mm -hmm. triangles, bells, anything like that to help keep a percussive feel if you don't have a percussionist. Mm -hmm. So he was like, I really need you to get some tracks. 
had to go back to Petersburg to find somebody who can make the tracks. Because I didn't know how to make tracks. Oh, okay. I just knew how to play drums. I thought he was going to give them to you. No, no. <laughs> they was like, you the drummer, you provide the tracks. So oh, I was okay. like, all right, let me go, you know, let me go, let me go find somebody to help me. So I the next Sunday I went down there and my boy. You got to be the though. luckiest musician in the world, man, got, because gotta there's be. no way. Gotta be. It, it, look, they could have got any, all them go-go musicians up there. It, that, them guys can play. And it, it was other drummers they were auditioning at the same time. That's so it even, wasn't just me. It was yeah. like me on Monday, come back on Tuesday, we're going to do somebody else on Wednesday. That was sort of like, Jalil, you got to get one of your boys to help you program this show like tomorrow. Because if you go back to Maryland and don't have these tracks oh, ready, yeah. They just gonna fire you, mm -hmm. man. I, for the next three weeks, I was in Bowie three times a week. Oh, okay. I was in Bowie three times a week. I was in Petersburg two times a week, going back and forth between um, Fredericksburg, Petersburg, Bowie, Bowie, Petersburg, Fredericksburg, and I was getting rides, man. Like I would have to catch the Greyhound some days. We talking about one day turnaround, not like next week. We are talking about like one day turnaround. I'd be on the Greyhound. I'd be on the Fred bus. I'd be on the GRTC, that's the Petersburg. Man, you probably felt, felt like you were pledging all over again. But all over, you know. <laughs> but but at the time, I was like, yo, I, I have never even thought this opportunity would come, that somebody would just call out the blue and say, yo, we got an opportunity. I've accomplished what I set out to do. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, I say, yo, it's okay to reset your goals after you reach the one. Like, mm -hmm. my goal was to graduate. Yeah, Did that. Then I said, I would love to play for a national recording artist. Mm -hmm. I did that. Yep. So I had to start over. I was like, man, I want to own a business. Yeah. Did that. You know, so people sometimes say, oh, you know, you, you were such and such musician. I was like, but that's just a little piece of the story. Yeah. You know, so kind of explaining things. So we got through the rehearsal and they said, well, next week, Genuine's coming. I was like, okay. You know, I was just real chill. Like, yeah. he's coming. I got in the car. I said, so what's Genuine going to say? He was like, man, you just got to be ready because he's going to be hard on you. Yeah. He come through the door. I was like, oh, that's him? Like, mind y'all, I still, I'm not like a, yeah. I'm not a super fan of the guy because I was listening to church music growing up. And I it sounds like church. you only knew the music from like a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we he comes to the rehearsal. He pulls the music director to the side. Apparently the conversation was like, he's all right, but I, I, he's not locked. I need him to know this show. Yeah. The excitement came when they was like, yo, you know we got to go to Caesar's Palace in five weeks. <laughs> First of all, I didn't know what the Caesar's Palace was. Well, I'm, I'm with Second, you. I said, "Where is this at?" They was like, "We going to the one in Windsor, Canada." I said, "Where?" Like, Windsor, Canada. Remember last time I went to Canada, we went to Toronto. Mm -hmm. We took a bus. Right now we flying. Jalil ain't never flew in his life. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now we talk about a show with Genuine back in Canada, and I ain't never flown before. Like twenty two, twenty three. 22. Yeah. 22. So they was like, Jalil, um, you know, we're going to fly. We're going to go, so I think it was Southwest. We're going to fly to BWI. Dot, dot, dot. Be here this time, this time, this time. At the end, Genuine was like, you know, he cool. He's solid. We'll run with him. We'll let him do this show. And it was Genuine opening up for Sinbad. Oh, okay. Uh, this was back in February 2012. So, I mean, Sinbad still had, you know, was still booking shows. He was doing casino shows. Mm -hmm. So the goal was to get in this show and get booked at other Caesar Palaces across the country. Mm -hmm. Man, when I was like, well, where are we playing? Like, I know we're going to Caesar's Palace, but I ain't never been for, I ain't never been to a casino. Right. So to, to go to a <laughs> casino and know they got a amphitheater that seats 6,000 in there, mm -hmm. I was like, let me Google some pictures online. So now my curiosity kicking in. I'm like, well, how long does it take to get there? How long is the flight? What do I need? Is it going to be cold? Like, I'm nervous. I'm just trying to find things. I don't know nobody else that been to Windsor before. That's like, it's just outside of Detroit. You'll be good. <laughs> so, oh, man, Windsor. That's right. That's Windsor, right. Windsor, you can I, go no, to the tunnel. No, my, me and my one of my best friends is from Detroit. And okay. I, me with, I was just trying to figure out what that city was right across yeah, the bridge. Yeah, that's Windsor. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so they was like, we going to just fly to Detroit. So now I'm looking like, what do you need to take on the flight? Do I got travel size items? How long are we going to be gone for? We was gone for like three days. We get to Detroit, tunnel over there. And I'm not big on water like we talked earlier. Like, mm -hmm. that's not my thing. But I was like, we're going to get vans and go over there. Got on the vans, got to the hotel. I was like, yo, this is nice. I'm from, mm -hmm. I'm from Culpeper. <laughs> you know, this this is cool. You know, and met Sinbad before the show. We sound checked. And lo and behold, Genuine was like, let me get, let me get on the drums. I was like, huh? He was like, I want to play. 
I mean, dude is a, I mean, super solid pocket. I was like, okay, now I'm even more nervous. This is my first show. You're going to get on and outdo me in the sound check. Right. So he was playing kit. And uh, so you have you played on like on a, you probably had never played on a system that big though. Never. A sound system that not, big. N- not even. Different close. ball game, man. Whole, whole different. First of all, they spoiled me. Because yeah. I remember, and this this goes back to when I say be ready, be humble, always be in a posture to learn. I re, like when I was undergrad, because I was always setting up, I had never had nobody set up for me. Mm-hmm. When I got to the show, they said, just show up. Whatever you want, we'll give it to you. <laughs> I, me? You know, I said, well, I, I do like a certain kind of symbols, the Sabian symbols I wanted. So, so they got the symbol room? <laughs> a symbol case. <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally a case on wheels. And they was like, well, we don't know exactly what you want, but here you go. And I was like, how do you work this? You know, like, I, I really don't know because I'd never seen one before. Mm-hmm. All you had to do was pop the locks off the top. Mm-hmm. And it opens up and there is like 30 symbols in individual slots. Yeah. And I'm like, I could pick any of these. They was like, yo, what? They was like, if you don't like this drum set, we'll go downstairs and get you another one. And I, I was like, for real? <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. We just want to make the artist happy. Mm-hmm. And I realized I was I was the artist. Right. Like I was a part of his team. So that means whatever I needed, they was willing to get. Mm-hmm. Man, I, they opened up the curtains. It, we, it was closed at first. Then they opened up and I just see seats, red seats all the way across. I'm like, yo, this is mind blowing. So I got back to the hotel room upstairs. I was like, man, I'm, I'm nervous. Me and the bass player was roommates. I said, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, yo. I'm really nervous. He'd now. been on. He'd been on tour. He'd done already. another. He'd done shows, and he'd been around for about a year or, or two. So he was comfortable. He was still kind of, still kind of new, though. He was new, but he he knew what to expect as far yeah. as like the the pressure of the show wasn't on him no more. And they had done like BB Kings and some other shows that did really well. Mm-hmm. So I was stepping into somebody's shoes that was a killer on the drums, you yeah. know. But genuinely to prove that I. I do the show. So mm-hmm. every, everybody's on the same page. And I'll never forget, this was, this was probably our first time where I felt like, yo, you good, Jill. you got this, you, you can do this. So we was at the show and I was sitting by the stage. They was like, yo, we about to go on in 20 minutes. <laughs> I was like, mm, mm, mm. And I was sitting on the side. I, I'll never forget, we had on all black. I had my older necklace on, and it's on YouTube. And I, and I was sitting there, he was like, are you all right? <laughs> I was like, Nah, man, I'm nervous now. You know, <laughs> ten minutes, ten minutes, and I was like, "Who?" He said, "Yo, yo, you good, yo? For real, like you, you've done a great job so far. I'm happy to have you here." And I was like, just hearing little stuff like that was that's like, right. "Yo, well, let's knock this show out." And we only had thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. They normal shows be like an hour and fifteen. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, "Yo, we just knocked this thirty out, man." To see the fans, the lights, the cameras, the action. Oh my god! I seen the- them live before, man, and it, <sighs> it, 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 I mean the crowd going stupid crazy. crazy. Yo, he is a he is truly a performer, like yeah. an entertainer as far as the whole show is concerned. And we were in Windsor, so it was really predominantly white people there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they wanted they came to see Sinbad. Yeah, genuine just happened to be opening. Mm-hmm. I mean, but even to see them when Pony came on, he was all throughout the aisles. Oh, everybody, I mean, the everybody, people, everybody know people, that <laughs> people was going crazy, and so just to see that that after that first show, I was like. Yeah, this is this is this is the life right here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, all the food in the dressing room and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, all the, I mean, it was just a ama- an amazing experience, man. And so I stuck with him for maybe three, three and a half years after that. Really? Okay. Okay. Y'all were y'all constantly on the road or was he well, did he live in Maryland? He lived t- in Maryland. Okay, all right. Not all too right. far from where we practiced. Okay, cool. There were some seasons we were really, really busy, and there were other seasons it was more practicing. So, like, I think one weekend in April, I mean, sorry, it was August, we had did, like, uh, what was it? Uh, Festival at Sea. It's an all-black cruise. We mm-hmm. had did that one weekend, did, like, two shows. And I think the artist for the week was LSG and SWV and Genuine. Oh, so really? So we did Monday, they did Wednesday, the other one did Friday. Mm. And so that that's how – and then the, the next week we was in – a Chicago area for something. And the next week we was in another state. So like the weekends were heavy because we were gone from like Thursday to Saturday or Friday to Sunday. Kind of the days were leaning over depending on where we were. Uh, we did the St. Lucia Jazz Festival. Mm-hmm. That was, oh, man, the lineup was Carlos Santana, R. Man. Kelly, Akon, the Jacksons, Genuine. I mean, and those type of shows, when you go to islands, man, they treat you like royalty over oh, yeah. there. I mean, we didn't get hotels on this trip. We got villas. <laughs> you know, 
remember I'm from Carpet for now, so <laughs> <laughs> you telling me we going to a villa? I'm what's what is a villa? <laughs> they had a kitchen, they had a dining room, own pool in the backyard, and I end up getting the master suite. It was probably five or six bedrooms in this joint. It was only three of us in there, mm-hmm. so everybody picked their own little spots. It had couches in the bathroom i was like this is the life you know sure. chilling hanging out just to get to relax on the island and just hang out we met a couple people uh, just amazing experiences um uh, we've done california we've done louisiana mississippi state fairs concerts bb kings i mean the list goes on from places we've done so who were some of the um <clears throat> who were some of the other noteworthy you got any cool stories of, because uh, I won't even ask you about the bad ones, because I know some of these celebrities are not the most easy to deal with people. Yeah. So we only have to go there. Okay. But, um, but who are some of the cooler um, celebrity uh, entertainers you had to, you had ran into? Man, I, 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 I say Avery Sunshine. She may okay. be not as notable, but yeah, yeah. like we've, we've worked or been on shows with Tank, Alicia Keys, uh, Keith Sweat. Oh, really? Y'all, uh, wait, no, no, yeah. back up. So you said you've been on shows with Alicia Keys? Yeah. So you get a chance to talk to her? Did you get a chance to like... My bad. Ashanti. Ashanti. I'm okay, okay. I'm tripping. It was Genuine and Ashanti. Okay. We was in Phoenix, Arizona at the... I forgot the name of the amphitheater or the, the theater we was at, but the catch was that the stage moved. So there's no bad a, seats. It moved the whole circuit, time. Uh, what they call it? Uh, so, I, man, I can't think of what it's called, but... It's not like uh, like a theater in the round, they say, but it's a it was a rotating yeah, stage. The like, stage rotated Prince was the whole big time. on that, man. And I, I, I can say it now. I'm I'm grown. <laughs> <laughs> they they kind of you know gave us a little few shots before the show, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it kind of I thought it was gonna help me be unnerved. I was just wanting to relax. Yeah. And he was like, yo, this is for you, Jalil. And I was like, you know, just take a little sip. Okay, we good. <laughs> and that stage starts spinning. <laughs> I was like, huh? Well, if you don't really, <laughs> and if you don't really drink, man, it's probably a, a, a bad idea. A bad terrible idea. idea. Yeah. You know, and I just remember genuine like stepping up on the drum platform where I was, I was always elevated higher on our rider. It was always that the drummer had the highest mm-hmm. viewpoint from the stage. Yeah. And so I just remember genuine like jumping and being on my shoulder. His hand was on my arm. <laughs> I was like, I'm trying to play, but I'm trying to be like, woo, you know, trying to get back in the zone and stuff. And the stage kept spinning and spinning. And then after a certain amount of time, it goes the opposite direction. Wow, yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, this is a lot. And we opened and Ashanti closed. Um, sh- that was that was cool. Like I said, Sinbad, we that was my first show. He was real cool. But the other shows, we really were the only one. Like, oh, okay. we were the main performers. We would go to BB King's and literally do a 9 o'clock show, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So, Genuine sometimes would bring his son out. Sometimes he would have the DJ, and he kind of set the stage mm-hmm. for what we was going to do next. But the majority of our shows was just Genuine, feature, headline, um, that's it. What, uh, so, how, what's, your, what's your experience with Keith Sweat? Keith Sweat was the host of one of the shows we did. He okay. wasn't on there as a performer. Okay. He was like special appearance. Like we y'all don't know he's gonna be here, but he came out. And that was on the down in Atlanta. Oh, they probably went bananas then. Crazy. <laughs> it was I forgot what it was a. Uh, we was at the Wolf Creek Amphitheater. Mm-hmm. But it was like an old school type show, like an old school. So it was Chubb Rock, RL from Next. Hey, don't, don't be calling people old school, man. That's to, my generation. Know, to, to me, I ain't know nothing about them. You know, <laughs> you know? who was a child rock? But again, like that crowd was there. Oh, they you know, probably, that older crowd, that all white going, crowd, with probably the going bananas. Two piece, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was <laughs> legit. And so half of this amphitheater, I think that place holds like ten thousand. Half of the seats were like you could book a table of ten. Yeah. The other part was open seating where you can just put a blanket, put some lawn mm-hmm. chairs up. So. That experience, I never really did anything on that scale as far as the the outside piece goes, because the St. Lucia Jazz Fest was more contained. It was outside, but it, yeah. it wasn't as open as like a, a Wolf Creek Amphitheater was. Mm-hmm. And we we went to uh, University of California Riverside. I mean, we've done pavilions in Oakland. We did uh, riverfronts in Peoria, Illinois. We've done so many casino shows that it it don't make no sense. You still in touch with a lot of these guys? The musicians, yeah. Okay. 
uh, follow a couple of, like his manager on 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 Instagram or Facebook, but not really talking to them much. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they still out here working and recording new music and doing all kinds of things. But once I got into graphics and video production and church communications type stuff, I just don't even have time to you know keep up. I understand? But there's no bad blood between anybody. Well, that's good. Um, I I left peacefully. I let them know the right way. Mm-hmm. Like I ain't gonna do this no more. Uh, but once you've experienced like what respect looks like, mm-hmm. after things start going down, you just be like, yo, I'm not doing this no more. <laughs> and I just had to have a heart to heart with myself, and I was like, yo, I'm not doing this no more. <clears throat> See, I mean, obviously, I've not done me and my crew. We're not done stuff on that scale. But I do understand that to be an entertainer professionally, uh, it's a drain, man. It's got to be. It's got to wear on you. And especially if you starting to starting families and you got wives and kids and all that stuff, it's got to wear on you. Yeah, um, I, you know, man, I keep saying I'm from Carpenter. That's like my tagline. I'm from Carpenter. <laughs> You're uh, not the only the, person to the, say that when you come the, in. <laughs> the one show I I'll never forget, and I I appreciate everybody in Carpenter. We did a um, Hollywood Casino in, in West, West Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. And when I tell you, I felt like Call Pepper brought like 10 buses. Yeah. Like everybody named Mama was there. Like J- 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 Genuine's over there and Jalil playing drums. That was just it. it was, I mean, I was seeing family. My, my mom and grandma came to the show. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, I was like, my, my dad was there. At family members, <clears throat> aunts, uncles, cousins, family friends, my brother's friend. I mean, everybody was there. And I was like, yo, this is dope to kind of experience something that most won't experience. But to also like have that hometown support to be like, yo, we're proud of you too. Yo, that took music to a whole nother level. That's right, man. You know, just when people appreciate the gifts and the talents and they see like people knew I was a troubled high schooler. You know, I got into college and then now what? Look, he's playing for Genuine. <laughs> you know, by then I knew the meaning of some of them songs and I was like, yo, that's why people like these songs. You know, <laughs> differences and in those jeans mm-hmm. and same OG. I was like, Okay. You know, my brother is one of the most accomplished drummers that I, mm-hmm. that I know. And I, we know a lot of musicians, man. Mm-hmm. But he talks so highly of you. He's like, <laughs> man, he said, that dude, he, I called him before. I said, uh-huh. I mean, I, I tried to get my, my thoughts together. He said, oh, yeah, that dude's on another level, man. He's doing some 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 superhuman, out of this world type of stuff. Yeah, I so. appreciate that. Yo, he, your brother was one of them people, man, that always commented on videos after a show or yeah. sent a message like, yo, Proud of you, man. Keep doing your thing. You sounded great. He was like, man, what's that hi-hat technique you was doing? <laughs> he was like, because I think we was in Illinois on the riverfront, and then I did like a drummer angle type video. And he was like, man, I'm going to keep sharing this clip every year. Every year, come on, I'm going to keep sharing this. And I was like, man, I appreciate it. So it's people like that, like other musicians that will mm-hmm. So to kind of see that humbleness and the talent and be like, yo, y'all, yo, ask him, yeah. ask him, talk to him, yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's always an honor, man. I definitely much respect to your brother. So once you, so, okay, so shifting gears. So once you got, uh, once you got off the road and so forth, um, it sounds like you came to be. Uh, I don't know if I want to, if I'm characterizing this right. You sound like you're a sound engineer, marketing specialist, digital media specialist. Uh, is that a, pr- a proper characterization? Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's cool. Um, sound <laughs> engineer is like the least of those, but um, I, I I do know how to do it. You know, um, it ain't my first thing. I definitely will bring a friend, but um, I man, I, I just found a, a niche to want to help people, man, any way possible. Mm-hmm. Whether it was churches, small businesses, nonprofits. So part of it was because I knew the marketing piece. I would make flyers like we're going on a college tour. Mm-hmm. So I partnered with I remember it's a nonprofit in Tappahannock. And I went down there and I was like, yo, do you have any young guys that kind of want to see the HBCU side of things? They gathered like 10. I just footed the bill, got a van, got the kids together. They got permission from the parents, pay for all. I, I wanted them to feel like, yo, what does it feel like to be in college? We went in on the classrooms. They got to see inside the buildings. I, I, because I was, I had frat brothers that were coaches, I was like, hey, can you, you know, can you, can you get some of the players come talk to my guys? Yeah, ain't no problem. We'll get them. Yeah. So like, go again. Right place, right time. Mm-hmm. Right connects. Right attitude. Right mentality. I called on the frat brothers, the brotherhood thing. They they showed up, and I was just showing these guys around the campus. I took them to like Union for lunch. Then we we rode over to VCU, 
VCU was huge, so you can't even do that whole thing in a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. You know, we was on a time limit. Then I took them to Virginia State to get that last experience. That's, that's where I wanted them to go. There's, I, there's iotas at all of these places too, correct? Or not? All of them. Yep, okay, yep, good. Yep. That's good. Yep. The tour guide at VCU was an iota. Oh, perfect. You know, and I just called my frat brothers when I got to say that. I was like, yo, I'm on, I'm on a yard with about 10 young men. Come talk to them. And, and the guys actually went to some of these schools. So it wasn't that's a lost good. cause like once that's they great. graduated. And so... For me, it was just like if if you if you can give back and 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 do it the right way, you know, where people can see the positive influences on you, you know. So I just began to like mix tools together. Like I knew I graduated from HBCU, but then I knew I had some marketing skills. Well, yeah. I knew I could start doing videos. So then maybe this little small business might need help with this. Well, maybe my church need help with this. Mm-hmm. And then the churches just started calling and calling and calling. It. Well, can you help us with this? I've, Absolutely, I I love to come. Mm-hmm. Somebody helped me. Somebody showed me how to do this stuff, and now I'm just gonna return it back to y'all. And so that's kind of how that started. Work with a couple of gospel artists as far as management, mm-hmm. just putting out new records, charting on the top on the billboards for top gospel album sales. So really? Like, yeah, okay. top fifteen and being on gospel radio, top one hundred and. I mean, just having CD releases and concerts and events and programs. And so people look, can you bring this group here? Can you bring that group here? So we traveling from New York to New Jersey to Florida to Tennessee to South Carolina to North Carolina. I mean, these experiences were crazy, but I, I go back and I'll be like, yo, you you were real, you were a, like a drum tech in college. <laughs> you didn't play. Right. You just watched and you just soaked it up. Then you went to Genuine where... You know, you were the drummer. They were catering to what you needed. What mm-hmm. do you want, Jalil? What kind of drums do you want? And then now when you go be a manager for gospel artists and work with churches, it's like you got both experiences from college, from a, uh, a national platinum recording secular artist, and now you can go back and impart to other groups locally and regionally and just help them see it from another perspective. Correct. So it's it's been crazy, man. We've won awards. We've been nominated for awards. We've been on ballots. It's just been a blessing, man. I I take none of this lightly or for granted. I try to tell, man, and, and I'm and I'm I'm I mean, I'm so so happy inside that you came to talk <laughs> talk to me about all this stuff because I people need to know this stuff, man. I kind of knew a lot of it, but I need it. I'm 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 glad I got you here for for about this this hour so we could kind of like uh, break it down so everybody can see that. Look, man, it ain't got nothing to do with where you're from, man. Absolutely, it's where you're at. And Absolutely. what you're doing? Absolutely. So, um, you 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 you're you're a sponge, evidently, and you and you're <laughs> take because I remember the one day we were sitting in uh, Fredericksburg and yeah, um, yeah. and Starbucks, the, uh, Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you 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 know you were asking me questions about some I don't know I don't know it was some I'm working on our movie our movie or something <laughs> right and uh yeah. and and just like that and the next thing you know you're doing like r- real big productions with this stuff. <laughs> You yeah, know? It's, it's crazy, man. But I, I asked you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wasn't afraid to say I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes we were sort of embarrassed if we asked for help man, look, versus just asking. There's you know? nothing at all wrong with uh with with not knowing, man. Yeah, it's it's something wrong with not knowing and then never knowing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, because it's it's too many too many. I mean, like I said, when I was in my doctoral program, you know how many YouTube videos I watched on statistics, exactly, and 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 real real complex concepts. Yeah. You know, there's nothing at all wrong with that, man. And and that's the cool part, like now. Like like we talked before before we started recording about like not doing this for a long time. Yeah. My church trusted me to help them reach thousands every week. Yeah. I never done it before. Mm-hmm. I just had a passion to do it. And it, so I, I meet with some of my friends and they be like, Why are you so passionate? I'd be like, yo, my, my grandma is in her seventies. Mm-hmm. And she'd be like, Well, I don't have Facebook. I don't have YouTube, I don't get on the internet. Like, so how do I watch service? Well, she like she likes the radio. Mm-hmm. So in my head, I'm like, well, every older person ain't like my grandma. Like, where they may get on their cell phones or they may know how to have use the internet if they choose to. Mm-hmm. I was like, so I I felt like a deep passion to make sure whoever wanted to get on had the best experience because they know church. In person, you know how many so, times I've been to church, man. I got to get up in the middle of the service and go in, <laughs> and help the sound man because a lot of oftentimes in these yeah. small churches, man, they got the, they got some equipment, mm-hmm. but they don't really have any expertise yep. to to operate the, the gear, right? Yep. So I say, look, respectfully, brother, let me help you out real quick. Exactly, and, and they have the. The, the the bass and the treble all yeah. over the place, the equalizer all over the place. I said, let yeah. me let me fix it for you. Yeah. Because honestly, like you just said, it, 
if they can't hear it and the experience is out of whack, they're missing the message. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because yep. you need to make it so it's easy to digest. Absolutely. And you know? any any other thing as a distraction, That's it will right. get them all focused. They and remember they remember the, the mic squeal at the, and, 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 and hummed and all of that stuff. Exactly. And they can't hear the message. They can't. Or they just be like, I'm going to go find another message to go watch for somebody <laughs> else who got it right. You know, and it goes back to investments and and knowing how to staff, and that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, but yeah. I yeah. had that conversation with my church. I was like, we got to make some changes. You know, yeah. and once I kind of pointed out, hey, this is where we are, but this is where I would love for us to be. You know, is there things that I can do to help our church get there? Learning new skill sets was one of those things. Mm -hmm. Learning how to do video, like I. I had a MacBook for years, but I never touched that one program. Never touched <laughs> iMovie. Like, I'm not about to mess with this. But then I, you can do green screen. Oh, you can. You know, so, like, once you take one little step, then you get into more. Well, you can add videos on top of that. You can cut this. You can add that transitions. I was like, yo, I'm in love now. Some people are just really afraid to, do, to learn new stuff, man. Yeah. And, and, and I'm telling you, man, I'm, fi I'm over 50 years old now. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I'm afraid that, that I'm going to wake up one day and I had a, the, the, the desire to keep learning. Mm. That's that's not living for me. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying. So, but anyway, man, we could be. Uh, well, let me let me ask you one thing. You got, you got kids? No, no kids, no kids. Okay. No kids. Well, we won't we won't ask about Kirk Franklin, Franklin then, since you don't have any kids. Oh so yeah, I no, nah, I, <laughs> I don't got no kids. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, so how do I'm sure you got some sort of business type of connections or phone numbers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, whatever you got. Um, how do absolutely. people get in touch with you? Man, I'm on uh, Facebook at Jalil Brown, J A L I L. Uh, last name Brown, B R O W N. Uh, I have a uh, my website is under construction, I'm rebranding everything. Man. Okay, I'm taking 21, 2021 by storm. So, I'm man, you taking it by down. storm already, now, man. I, I want to take it to a whole nother <laughs> level, man. So, soon I'll be legitimately offering um, more services, graphic, I'm mm -hmm. offering consultations. Um, my email address, if you want to contact me, is JKB Strategic. At gmail.com. Okay. I mean, I love to work with churches, small businesses. Got a couple of projects we're working on now. I'm super excited about uh, one of the stores in the Freddysburg Mall. Been working with them for a couple months, built their website. Got a couple of churches coming down the pipeline, meeting with some churches this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really excited about some of the opportunities uh, that are presented themselves um, to kind of assist others as they want to reach certain heights. So. Man, you're a real humble guy, man, and it's and it feels good that um, you're a young person that can relate to the to uh, I'm gonna say it. You can relate to the old people, and you can <laughs> and you can relate to the young people, and um and you can speak both languages, and uh, and that's that comes from just being a being a, a humble uh, communicator, in my opinion. Um, because you know you really uh you, you've you've learned a lot. You've been you've been around. You've done a. a, a lifetime of stuff and you're only in your <laughs> early 30s and uh i mean you know that's just something that's a very admirable um uh, you, you know i'm just i'm so i'm just so happy that you could come and share your uh, experiences with us and for real man you know because i always try to tell musicians who have done stuff like you've done if if you've done it and you can't really tell nobody else how to do it right and what is then what was it all for man, man and, and, and I, I i must admit man my parents was hard on me growing up about uh, respect. Yeah. You know, and I was always around older people. Mm -hmm. And so like the respect I have just for their wisdom, mm -hmm. if they decide to impart it on you, like I'm just, like you said, a sponge to soak that stuff up. And then like now my fiance, she, man, she pushes me super hard, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, I'm like, I don't want to do this no more. I'm tired. I was like, she was like, yeah, Yo, you, you know, you need to do that project. Yeah, you know, yeah. you need to get that yeah. done. Da 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 da. And so it's always good to still have your parents encouraging, you, but now to have a fiance that encourages you and just surround yourself with positive people mm -hmm. who can kind of make that thing happen. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> it's definitely, man, definitely an honor. I'm definitely looking forward to what the rest of this year got in store. Um, like I said, I'm looking to hear from people that are looking to do some new things. Okay. All right, man. We'll, we'll see what we can do to try to help you out a little bit. Yeah, Just uh, hopefully, that. don't be a stranger, man. Come on back and uh, as things progress and talk to us again. Yes, sir, man. We'll do. Appreciate you again. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Jaleel Brown.